Hello everybody, welcome to Morzak EV, a channel dedicated to all things electric vehicles, electric vehicle charging and all related technologies. So for about three and a half billion years, organisms have been converting the energy from the sun into useful energy. And now here at Morzak HQ, we've decided to jump on that bandwagon. So I thought I'd talk you through our install and what it involved. So before I start the video, don't forget to give us a cheeky thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications of our future videos. Make sure you check us out on social media. And if you're thinking of buying a Tesla vehicle, make sure you use our Tesla referral code, where we both get 1,000 free supercharger miles. So this morning, we were really awakened by the courier and he was dropping off our solar panels. So here we got about eight kilowatts of PV panels. Underneath that, behind it, is the inverter and a few bits and pieces for the electricals. And then here, this is the mounting system. So this mounting system, um, it's the Renault Sol mounting system. So you, as you've probably seen from our other videos, the Starlink video and stuff, um, our roof is actually a flat roof, it's not a pitch roof. Um, it's, a, it's a rubber material, uh, so we can't drill through it, so we can't mount it on brackets. So what we're actually using is this Renaissance system, which is like basically like plastic tubs that we can fill with ballast. Um, we've got some of that already um, to weigh it down. And then the brackets fit onto the, the plastic tubs here and the panels uh, fit onto the brackets and it's quite neat as well hide all the electrics so here we go another 450 kg to get up there. For the solar panels, we've got 22 of the JAM 60S10s. They're 345 watt solar panels, and that keeps us under the 8 kilowatts for the whole system. Incidentally, 8 kilowatts is what we applied for and got permission for from our DNO. Any system under 4.5 kilowatts doesn't need permission but just needs to be notified to the DNO anything above this and you need to get permission so we work with our DNO to determine what size system we could have and what we would get permission for so why did we go with these particular JA solar panels well we did a lot of research spoke to a few different companies looked up the reviews and it came down to a few things firstly they're type tested They've always proven reliable according to the reviews and different people we've spoken to. They've got a good reputation as a company. They're a monocrystalline panel and that seems to be really important. Um, monocrystalline is a lot more efficient than a polycrystalline panel. So it's worth spending the extra money to have something that's more efficient. One of the things we weren't concerned about was roof space. As you'll see on the videos, we've got plenty of roof space. So we didn't need a panel that was around 400 watts. We could go for something like 345 watts and have more panels. Overall, this worked out more cost effective. But if you've got a smaller roof and therefore less roof space, you might need a higher wattage panel to meet your power requirements. <laughs> For the inverter, we spec'd out a Solis 1P K5G 8 kilowatt inverter. Again, some of the factors that influenced us in this decision was that it was reliable. It had got a good power factor so it doesn't lose a lot in the conversion from DC to AC. We weren't fussed about any smart features. Again, you'll find that out down the line that we're using various other systems. So we're not interested in 
monitoring the solar generation using the inverter itself. We've got our own separate system for doing that. Again, Solis has got a really good reputation for producing inverters that last well. And finally, we know quite a few people who've got this inverter and have never had problems with it. The inverter itself is also a dual MPPT, which means we, we can have two separate strings and if needed, we could have had them different sizes or that can generate at slightly different powers. It's not really an issue for us because all our panels are in one orientation, but again, that's useful to know for if you have a dual pitch roof and you've got solar panels on both sides of the roof that will be generating at slightly different times and at slightly different powers. <music> So the mounting system we're using is the Renasol Console Plus system. As I mentioned earlier, this is because we don't have anywhere where we can screw the solar panels onto the roof structure. So we use the Renasol Console Plus system with some ballast. One of the big pluses of this system as well is that it's really simple to install. Now I'm gonna do a separate video on the installation of this system, going into all the details. And once I have, check out the link above on the cards. So the hardest part of the installation was honestly getting everything up onto the roof. We got the Renesol console tubs up to the roof, all the ballast. That was definitely the hardest bit as we were using 25 kg sandbags. Then we carefully got the solar panels up to the roof, bolted everything down onto the consoles, connected up the cables. As I said, this is done in two strings. So 11 panels on each string. And then the cables are run across the roof and down the side of the house and into where our inverter is. Again, we've got a flat roof, so we've got no loft. So unfortunately we have to run down to our plant room, which is downstairs. It's better if you can keep your DC cable run shorter. This wasn't possible for us. We've bunched all the cables together with the Starlink cable. Make sure you check out the video if you haven't already. So that all runs down the same path and we can make it look all neat and tidy. <music> So at some point I plan to do a video on how the system's performing, what sort of payback we're looking at and how we're using the system to generate our hot water and put electricity into our vehicles. But I'll save that for another time. Bear in mind that we're doing a lot of the work ourselves on this install. However, we are fully qualified to do all the work we've done and this does cut down on our installation costs. So once we've been generating electricity for a few months, we'll do an update video, let you know how we've getting on with the system. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to give us a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Check out our Tesla referral code. Check us out on social media. And in the meantime, thanks very much for watching.